Hi guys, it's still June 10, 2019. A subscriber asked me to check out the two preachers, this channel. So I did, and uh, they show a lot of weather events taking place across the world. Um, if the two preachers actually talk about weather modification, geoengineering, electromagnetic frequencies, scalar technology, and uh, that we are absolutely now facing weather being used as a weapon, then please link below to those videos. From what I've heard, I, I haven't heard that. I do know a lot of Christians believe in prophecy and believe that this is God doing all of this. I don't. Um, but I came across here Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy, ga uh, thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And they go on to talk about how um, speaking the word God and Jesus and or Jesus is it, it, when you're angry or perhaps using it with a curse word, that is taking the Lord's name in vain. I don't, I don't, I used to believe that because that's what I was told. That's what I was told, you know, as a kid. And I believed it until I started really thinking about it. Well, what, what does vain mean? The, the word vain holding oneself in high regard of their own self, believing that they're more beautiful than anybody else or more intelligent than anybody else or more worthy than any other. Conceit. Conceit. I, I really do believe that taking the Lord's, the Lord thy God's name in vain. What it means is taking on that label, Christian, using it for your own purposes, using it to puff yourself up, to believe that you are better than everyone else, to believe that you're going to heaven and, well, everybody else, they're going to hell. If they're not like you and they haven't been saved by Jesus and they're not a Christian. Now, it's like wearing that label, calling yourself a Christian when you live a life antithetical to Jesus, when you're not living Jesus's teachings when you're still sinning you now Jesus says I will forgive you of your sins go and sin no more but most Christians don't want to even engage in a conversation about that they just want to wear that label it makes them feel good even though they're not living good you know, the Christian who continuously lives a pretense, living like a hypocrite, that is taking the Lord's name in vain. There's a lot of them out there. And that's unfortunate because <laughs> we're living a time when we really need the real Christian, the genuine Christian. So, um, I just wanted to speak to that. And I don't hear very, I, I, I have spoken this before in a video years ago, and I did get some Christians who thanked me <laughs> for saying what I just said 
because they also interpret it just as I interpret it. Now, we're told things as a kid that we just go on believing. And if we just go on believing it, never really thinking about it, then we'll be mouthing a lot of stuff that ain't quite right. So, yeah. I mean, to be a true Christian, to be a genuine Christian, takes a lot of work. Very demanding. Very demanding. And it means getting to the truth of who you are, knowing who you are, which requires that very difficult work of self-reflection, reevaluating all of those beliefs um, that you have. And uh, it's a stripping of the ego. Now that ego that you know protects us from anything we don't want to hear from our truth and protects us from anybody who uh, who calls calls us out you know I I have had an awful lot of Christians who really do believe that they can continue sinning now they say well Jesus died on the cross for our sins what, what does that mean? That means that you can go on sinning? Wow! Now, that is absolutely a Christian who is taking the Lord thy God's name in vain. They're using it for their own purposes. For their own laziness. For their own uh, inability to face their own self in the mirror. And their refusal to do anything to change their way. Now it's kind of like I got a comment from someone who uh, underneath one of the videos that I posted today and said you know that uh, this country has to repent. The country? Well the individuals in the country um, it is because uh, there is little repentance that this is all that God is doing this now I don't believe that but alright what does repent mean I've asked Christians what does repent mean and all I've gotten from them is well um, you say you're sorry for the sins that you've committed and you say you're sorry to God well that's it wow okay um, what about changing your way? Because repent, you know, it has, it has this, um, there's far more to it. It's not just saying you're sorry to God. That's easy. It's, you genuinely apologize, genuinely apologize to those that you have hurt. And you change your ways. Well, I've <laughs> had a very difficult time having uh, any conversation beyond the now you just say that you're sorry to God. It's the changing of the ways that is necessary. So for all of the Christians who don't do that, you are absolutely taking the name of the Lord, Christian, Christ, you take that name in vain. In vain. It's not you know, uh, God saying that you shall not speak the name Jesus in anger. You shall not speak the name Jesus or God uh, and with a curse word. Uh, no. You take the name I'm taking the name of Jesus Christ by calling myself a Christian, but I do it in vain. I do it for my own glory, not for Jesus, because if it was for Jesus, 
well, they would be living a very different life. Yes, they would be working on themselves to make sure that they don't sin again. They would be taking very simple passages in that Bible so seriously, like God saying that lying is an abomination. And they would be thinking about what is that narrow road? What does that mean? And so few are on it. Well, what makes me think I am on it? Why do I think I'm on it? Why do I think I'm going to heaven? What makes me so special? You don't want to go there because there's probably nothing special about you. Sorry to say, but an awful lot of people go through life calling themselves all these things, all these wonderful things, and believing that they're good simply because they've put that label on them. They've stuck them, you know, in that category. And that's all they have to do. They don't have to, they don't have to try to live as Christ lived. They don't have to do a thing. They can just go on taking, you know, those passages that work for them, you know, justifying everything because it works for them. It's all vain. It's all conceit. It's all self-centered. It's all me, 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 me. Just because you call yourself a Christian don't mean that <laughs> you're any better than anyone else. Not until you do a whole lot of really hard personal work. You know, thinking about God, thinking about what is the greatest betrayal of God. And I realized the greatest betrayal of God, for those who believe that God brought you, gave you life, it was God that gave you life. But we get so, in this life, so filled with so many influences early on and, well, a whole lot of parents kind of do that parenting thing where they are guiding their children to behave in ways that will get them approval from man, not Jesus or God, from uh, those in their community, approval from mommy and daddy and the pastor and the teachers, and and then they grow up to be people who are living a pretense, living with a mask, not real. They go out in the world and they act. They're actors and actresses. They perform to get that approval. They're not conscious of that, but so many are filled with so many personal issues and they don't even understand what is behind what drives them, their motivations. You know, they don't understand that the past certainly is a powerful force in the present. But they don't know who they are because they have not done that work of self-reflection, reevaluating all of those beliefs that there, most of us get in childhood. We just adopt them from other people. And then we grew, grow up believing that that belief is right. It's the truth when it may not be. We believe that our beliefs are our beliefs, not those adopted in our younger years. We think it's where my belief. And I don't have to check it out because I'm surrounded by people who believe the same thing. So I never have to reevaluate that belief because I get so much support from others. They tell me I'm right. 
and yet all of you may not be right. So if you have adopted beliefs early on and they're not your beliefs and you don't even know they're not your beliefs, you don't know who you are. If you don't know that the past is still driving your present because you've never done that self-reflective work, you don't know who you are. If you have been shamed as a child or whatever, and you do grow to be an adult who is operating to get that approval from your community members, you're doing it out of ego, but you don't understand that that is what is driving your behavior, then you don't know who you are. If you don't know that your abandonment issues drive an awful lot of your behavior out in the world, you're afraid that your friends and your family may abandon you if you share what you really believe or think, so you don't. Well, that means that you are performing for them. You're not real with them. That, I believe, is the greatest betrayal of that life that God gave you. Those who believe that God brought us into the world, then God brought individuals into the world. Unique individuals. Every one of us is unique. And if God created that uniqueness in all of us, and we don't do the work to get to that and to live it, if we don't do the work to individuate, to become our authentic self, the self that God created, I don't think there's any other betrayal that can top that. And most people betray God all the time. They don't understand that they're operating from their own vanity, conceit, their own ego, their own me, 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 me. I'm going to justify everything so it works for me so I can remain the exact same never have to do anything, never have to do any of that personal work, which is required. But, you know, it, so many, this is a spiritual war. Oh, it is a spiritual war. And I get that completely, totally, absolutely. What does that mean, though? It means that you've got to get real. It means that you've got to do that really difficult spiritual work, which means breaking down the ego and getting real in the world, speaking honestly, living honestly. Um, and if, if more people did that, the world would change. We would change reality. The ripple effect would be, well, I'm smiling because it, it would, it would finally manifest a healthy world. So if you're still sinning and you're still, you know, uh, refusing to do that personal work of changing and refusing to do that personal work to get to your real self you're not on a spiritual road you're not a Christian you're just using all of that you know to make yourself feel good and you know it's really 
sad to me. I've come across so many Christians who have betrayed me, lied about me, um, lied to me, and they've done a lot of damage to me. They don't care. They're fine. They're fine because they're still comfortable. They're still believing things about themselves that are not true. They're, you know, they get on their knees, they pray to God for guidance. Well, if that God is not guiding you to look in the mirror and face yourself, face the sinning that you continue, uh, it's an ongoing thing, face the hurt that you have caused other people, face the fact that you may be living a pretense that, well, lying is uh, number one. It's number one. You can't, <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing goes before lying. Because if one is lying to themselves, lying to other people, facing other issues, they're going to be lying to themselves about those other issues. So we face first the, uh, either if you lie outright, face that first. If you're living a pretense, you face that. Um, if you're lying to yourself, you know, believing those beliefs are yours, but you've never, never sat. You know, and it's not just, hey, I'm going to sit down for 10 minutes and think, hmm, is that belief mine? Yeah, yeah, it's mine. Okay, no, it takes a lot of work. It's hard work. That's why most people just don't do it. So, for those who don't do it and they call themselves Christians, you know, that's, those are the Christians that, in the Bible where Jesus says, go, I never knew you. Go away from me, I never knew you. Oh, that's my paraphrasing, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, go away, I never knew you. Why? Because you lived a life of pretense. You lived a life of lying to yourself, lying to other people, being an actor and an actress performing when you walked out that door. How could I possibly know you if you were never real? If you could never get to yourself when you were still performing out there to get that approval from your neighbors, from your friends, from your family. Oh, you're such a good, good, good person. Oh, look, you do such wonderful work, but you're doing it for yourself, for your own vain glory. When nothing is real, no one knows you. When you haven't done that work, oh, you think you know yourself. <laughs> but you don't, but you don't. So if you're living that lie, God doesn't know you, Jesus doesn't know you. And yeah, you're just, uh, you know, putting on that cover putting on that label that to the world says I'm a good person when that might not be the case no I am not trashing Christians no I do not hate Christians 
I have a really hard time with hypocrisy. I have a really hard time with people who use use things to for their own sake, you know, in terms of, you know, in the the realm of, you know, spirituality or Christianity. Yeah, I have a really hard time when uh when people just cloak themselves in a name that does bring out, oh, I'm a good person. And then they go about living a life that is so antithetical to Christ's teachings, how he lived his life, And yeah, it is true. If most Christians were genuine, we would not be living this nightmare. 